Welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna podcast brought to you by Loser Paul. This coming weekend, the Gunners will travel 150 plus miles to the Cardiff City Stadium where we'll face Neil Warnock's Bluebirds. Our match day four opponents won promotion to the Premier League last May for the first time since they were relegated back in 2014, but remain one of the clear favourites to go straight back down. In Neil Warnock, they have a very experienced manager, and although he isn't everybody's cup of tea, he's proven throughout his career that he can be effective. His teams are always hardworking, willing to get stuck in, and often adopt a very direct approach. Now, Cardiff City have played three so far this season, drawn two and lost one, conceding just two goals. But the worrying thing for them, from their point of view at least, is that they're yet to score in the Premier League. However, given our defensive frailties, you can be sure they'll be feeling confident of getting off the mark this Sunday. In their last outing, the Bluebirds were held to a goalless draw up at Huddersfield Town, despite the hosts being reduced to 10 men. After Huddersfield had Jonathan Hogg sent off, Cardiff did turn up the heat and came extremely close to breaking the deadlock when captain Sean Morrison headed into the hoardings from six yards out and substitute Bobby Reed's glancing effort drifted narrowly wide. Huddersfield had 72% possession before Hogg sending off and just 30% after his red card. So given the way the pendulum swung in Cardiff's favour, Warnock will feel that was a real opportunity missed. So what can we expect from our opponents tactically? You can expect a low block, plenty of men behind the ball, a direct style of football with Zahore being the main target. His hold-up play has been pretty impressive so far this season and it's clear he's an integral part of Warnock's strategy. Warnock will likely work on set pieces in the build-up to Sunday's game, given that's traditionally been a weakness of ours. But generally speaking, the weaker sides, and I don't mean that disrespectfully, often see that as a way of levelling the playing field by putting an increased emphasis on set-piece situations. It can prove to be key. From a Gunners point of view, getting our first win under Unai Emery last weekend was huge. We now head into a run of very, very winnable fixtures and it's of paramount importance that we string a run of positive results together if we're to challenge for the top four positions. It will not only see us leap up the table, but it will instill confidence in the group and increase their belief in the Emery way. Naturally, when results start coming thick and fast, players buy into the philosophy As far as we're aware, at the time of recording, there are no new injury concerns going into this weekend's game. I'd assume, rightly or wrongly, that Mesut Ozil will return to the squad after his illness. We know he's returned to training. We've seen pictures of him uh, in his training gear and, and, and getting involved in the sessions. Although we've not had any official word yet, it looks as though Aaron Ramsey has in fact agreed a new deal with the club extending his stay beyond this summer. And I say that because the agency representing him have been running competitions via social media with the prize being an Arsenal shirt with Aaron Ramsey on the back. If that's the case and the situation is resolved, I think that will be the end of him sitting on the bench, at least while he's fit. Post West Ham, Unai Emery acknowledged the fact we still need to improve and I think any sensible fan will understand that we're nowhere near where he wants us to be at this point, let alone where we want us to be. But equally, this is a work in progress and things aren't going to change overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day and all that. Here's what the boss and Aaron Ramsey had to say shortly after the final whistle. It's clear we need to improve, and improve is uh, in this transition to to get uh, better the balance and uh, and also continuing creating uh, for the attack with uh, I think more control with the ball. Today is a, a match, a difficult match, but uh, it's for that uh, we are happy and things for to improve. He wants us to press, um, so that's um, pressing really high at the pitch. Um, so that's the biggest thing, really. And then, um, obviously, um, we're trying to we're trying to all figure it out going forward as well. So um, hopefully we can combine the two now next week and get another win under our belt. For more in-depth discussion concerning the West Ham game last weekend, check out episode 23 of the podcast featuring Chris Davison. So my starting 11 for Sunday's game would be as follows. Petr Cech in goal. 
a back four of Bayerin, Mustafi, Sogradis and Monreal. I'd go Xhaka, Torreira, Ramsey in the midfield and a forward three of Ozil, Mkhitaryan and Aubameyang. If that midfield trio of Xhaka, Torreira and Rambo can play as a unit, cover each other effectively and protect the defence when we're without the ball, that could be a formidable midfield. I was tempted to throw Lacazette in there too, maybe ahead of Mkhitaryan, but given Emery's comments last week and the fact he didn't select them both at the Emirates, I find it hard to believe he'd do so in an away game. So that's the basis for my decision there. We put out a poll asking how you guys are feeling ahead of the weekend's game. And the results were as follows. 64% of you said you were feeling confident. 22% said nervous. And 14% not sure on the fence. Um, In years gone by, you know, most Arsenal fans would be extremely confident of going somewhere like Cardiff and leaving with maximum points. But I guess given our dismal away record last season... Some of you are understandably nervous, and and that's fair enough. My prediction uh, for Sunday's game is Cardiff City nil, Arsenal 2. I just feel that if our passing game clicks into place, we could run riot. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case last weekend, where we actually misplaced 41 passes in the first half alone, hence our inability to get into any sort of rhythm. Right, I've got a few stats and facts for you concerning the two teams contesting Sunday's game, starting with Cardiff City. So boss Neil Warnock has won just one of his last 15 Premier League games as a manager and none of the last nine. Pretty poor record that. Cardiff had, going into the Huddersfield game, failed to hit the target despite taking 23 shots in their opening two Premier League games. So there are concerns there around their ability to score goals. And uh, a bit of a more positive fact uh, from from an Arsenal point of view, you probably care more about this one. Arsenal haven't lost to Cardiff City in any competition since the 11th of February 1961 when they beat us 3-2 at Highbury. So uh, the omens are good, guys, but uh, let's not get carried away. Now, at the top of the show, you may have heard me mention that this podcast is brought to you by Loserpool, our new sponsors, and we're thrilled to be working alongside them. Loserpool is an online game in which you can bet against your friends, try to outwit your mates, and uh, and have a little competition amongst yourselves. Check out Loserpool.com. It's a really easy concept. It's a great concept. It's definitely something that I'll be getting involved with and, with and dragging the boys into as well. I'm going to play you a little clip now um, so you can hear what loser pool is all about meet our hero he's a smart guy who loves sports and loves outwitting other people our hero needs to show the world his mastery of the game our hero does this by playing games at loser pool our hero is you loser pool has two games In the namesake, the games of an entire season are grouped together into weeks or rounds. After paying an entry fee, you choose one team to lose that week or round. If you're correct, you earn the right to repeat the process in the next round. But the catch is that you cannot choose a team a second time until all the teams have been chosen by you once. If you're knocked out early, you may re-enter the same pool by paying a penalty to make it fair for the other players. Or you may wait until the next pool starts in a few weeks. Razor Pool is similar to Loser Pool in that the games of an entire season are grouped together. But in this case, you pay the entry fee and predict the outcome of all the games in that week or round. You will be ranked against all other players according to your accuracy. And at the end of each round, a predetermined percentage of players will be eliminated. There is no option to buy back into a pool if you are eliminated, (laughs) and so you will have to wait until the next pool starts to play again. In both games, the prize money grows very rapidly. The pool is allocated to the last man standing, or to add a little drama, to a small surviving group if they vote according to predetermined rules. Loser Pool is about community, friendship, fun and rivalry. Discuss and debate the games and events of the week with players from around the world. 
Invite your friends and co-workers into your own sub pools and see who can outsmart the group and earn bragging rights. This is your moment. Create an account. Show your sports genius. Be the hero. What a fantastic concept. It sounds like a lot of fun. It's definitely something we'll be getting involved in here. And we're proud to be supporting loserpool.com. Get yourself over there. Get signed up and uh, play against your friends. Set up your own mini pools, your mini leagues. And uh, I think this might be the new fantasy football, if I'm being honest. Now, I've been asked to make my choice uh, for team that I think is going to lose in the Premier League this weekend. Um, just quickly glancing at the fixtures, uh, I guess the contenders have to be Cardiff City. Um, I'd say Huddersfield Town are, are likely to lose at Goodison Park, given the way those two sides have started the season. Um, I guess looking at this, my pick for, for loser this week will, would be Cardiff City. I think I'm going to stick with that. Uh, Leicester-Liverpool is, is a very difficult one to call. Uh, Chelsea take on Bournemouth, of course. And, and that's a good shout, actually. Bournemouth going to Stamford Bridge. But Bournemouth have started the season pretty well as well. So I wouldn't rule them out from, from picking up a result. Uh, Newcastle travel to Man City. In fact, I'm going to change my pick. Newcastle going to the Etihad. That has got to be the one. Uh, so that's my loser for this week. Uh, let us know what yours are by tweeting us at Chronicles underscore AFC. We'll be back very, very soon with a review of the Cardiff game. That'll be on episode 24 coming out next Tuesday. Until then, have a great weekend. Ciao.